Hey there, AP Hug team. This is Sanchez with our next review lecture, taking a look at Unit 4, which was our discussion of agriculture. Now, geographers generally believe that humans evolved from hunters and gatherers to stationary farmers over thousands of years, as humans constantly touched the, and hauled plants from gathering efforts to feed themselves. Geographers believe that agricultural innovation occurred and diffused from multiple hearths or places of origin. According to Carl Sauer, uh, humans first learned how to grow plants in Southeast Asia through vegetative planting. Now, vegetative planting is the process of simply cutting off a stem of another plant or by dividing up the roots of a plant. So Southeast Asia has a climate and a terrain that would have supported the growth of root plants that are easily divided. So these kind of plants would be like, for example, taro or yams or bananas or palm. From Southeast Asian hearths, this knowledge diffused north into east into China, into Japan, and then west towards Southwest Asia, Africa, and the Mediterranean region. Other vegetative hearths are believed to have merged through independent innovation, and those are located in the Northwestern South America near the Andes Mountains, and also in West Africa. Now, later humans made the leap from the first agricultural revolution to seed agriculture, which is farming through the planting of seeds rather than simply planting the part of the parent plant. Seed agriculture leads to higher yield crops since there are so many seeds. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our first agriculture revolution. And on the screen right now, we also, I want you to be familiar with the fact that it's also referred to as the Neolithic Revolution. So the Neolithic Revolution saw human development of seed agriculture and the use of animals and farming processes about 12,000 years ago. So the growth of seed crops, um, crops like wheat and rice, and they use animals, the use of animals, I should say, such as goats and sheep, replaced the hunting and gathering nomadic lifestyle that they had existed since humanity was born. Human groups were able to stay in one place, basically, and they grow their populations and start to build settlements and communities. The ability to produce more food without roaming for it increased the carrying capacity of the earth, that's tied to our population, which charted a path towards the development of civilization. Like the advent of vegetative planting, the first agricultural revolution is believed to have occurred independently in several hearts. All right, um, so reviewing the first Neolithic revolution, then we can also tie to the second agricultural revolution. So just to kind of go back in history just a little bit, um, tying back to way back in the Middle Ages, most farmers worked on their lands to feed themselves and their families in kind of an open lot system. One of which where there was a large plot of community farmland and that the villagers farmed and produced a crop to eat. Now, as capitalism grew, feudalism diminished and the villages enclosed their farmland, okay, the enclosure movement. So this movement gave individual farmers their own plots of farmland, making a major shift in agriculture. Geographers still kind of debate where and when the second agricultural revolution begins, although nearly most agree that it kind of coincides with the Industrial Revolution, which for your mental timeline should be about 17th, 18th century, and we see it play out in England and Western Europe. The growing industrial economy and the decline of feudal villages in the 1600s, 1700s cost a, mace, uh, a massive urban migration because you think about it former farmers moved to the cities in England and Western Europe for work so this urban migration caused a great jump in the demand for food to be shipped to the cities for the workers with this demand came new innovations in farming and transportation technology that dramatically increased crop and livestock yields so this is where we get, again, new farming technology was invented. We're trying to make it more efficient, easier to farm. These kind of inventions incur, uh, would include like better collars for the oxen that were used, um, the use of horses instead of oxen for farm farming. We also see that the farmers are experimenting with new fertilizers, field drainage systems, irrigation systems, ways to store, and all of these things were invented to help increase farm outputs, basically more crops, more food. Higher farm outputs also encouraged the population boom that accompanied with the Industrial Revolution. 
Also in this unit, you need to be familiar with the two types of uh, agriculture, subsistence versus commercial farming. So um, if we talk about subsistence farming, it's when a farmer can grow only enough food to feed his family uh, or her own family. And in many less developed regions of the world, people are subsistence farmers. So you need to be familiar with the different types of sub subsistence farming. One type of subsistence farming is something called shifting agriculture. In shifting agriculture or cultivation, subsistence farmers actually rotate the fields they cultivate in order to allow the soil to replenish the nutrients, rather than farming the same plot of land over and over again. Because if you keep just using the land over and over again, that's eventually going to suck out the nutrients and the, the minerals and the, the, all the good stuff that the plants need. So shifting cultivation, though, is different than crop rotation. So when you think of crop rotation in which the farmer changes the crop type, not the plot of land, in order to keep the soil healthy. So farming the same type of crop repeatedly on the same plant, same plot of land, like we said, leaches all that good stuff out of it. So shifting cultivation is also uh, often found in tropical zones. So when you associate it with, for example, like the rainforest regions like we find in Africa or the Amazon River basin in South America, throughout Southeast Asia, uh, because the topsoil of the, is thin in these region, regions. So making it necessary to change the plot of land frequently to actually sustain and actually grow healthy crops. A primary cause of poor, uh, poor soil quality in this region is that heavy tropical rains actually wash away the soil nutrients. Now, part of this um, discussion, we can also tie in something known as slash and burn subsistence farming, slash and, slash and burn agriculture. So a common way that farmers in these regions prepare a new plot of land for farming is called slash and burn. So in this case, the land is cleared by cutting or slashing the existing plants on the land and then burning the rest of the cleared plot area to actually create that new farmland called the Swidden. So the slash and burn method is a form of extensive subsistence agriculture, using a large amount of land to farm for food for the farmer's family to eat. So slash and burn is not dependent on advanced technology, only really on human labor. And the presence of extensive acreage, because plots are frequently abandoned once the soil quality becomes so poor, then of course they have to go to the new land because they must make a uh, new Swidden or new land for the crop. Often Swidden farmers, uh, they will mix different seeds on the same plot of farmland. And this practice is known as interlage. This helps the grow the food for the balanced diet and actually re reduces the risk of crop failure. I want to go back to um, into this slide on subsistence because I want to tie in, we just mentioned extensive I um, want to make sure you guys understand the difference of between intensive subsistence farming. So intensive subsistence agriculture is when the farmer cultivates a small amount of land in a very efficient way to produce food for the farmer's family to eat. So intensive subsistence agriculture is usually found in fertile areas that are highly populated. So think about it as China, India, Southeast Asia, or major population clusters. So remember, subsistence farming is not intended for the sale at the marketplace. Its intent is not farming surplus or for sale, but really the intent of it is producing enough food for the farmer's family to survive. Now remember, that's different, of course, than extensive subsistence agriculture is intended for low population densities with extensive amounts of land available, so more land available. All right, another form of... Um, Subsistence agriculture, we could look at pastoral nomadism. Pastoral nomadism is a form of subsistence agriculture that actually involves the breeding and herding of animals to produce food, um, shelter, and clothing for survival. So this type of agriculture is practiced in climates that are very limited, if any, so arable land, um, so such as grasslands or deserts or even steppes. Sometimes pastoral nomadism can be sedentary, where the pastoralists live in one place and their herds of animals stay, stay nearby, or they can be nomadic. So if they're nomads, again, this is where the pastoralists travel with their herds and they don't settle in one place for too long. So often pastoralism involves the herding of cattle, sheep, camels, goats. Um, this type is practiced in arid climates, 
So think more desert, more dry in North Africa, Central and Southern Africa, the Middle East and Central Asia. Nomadic pastoralists often practice transhumance. So remember, transhumance is defined as actually the movement of the herds to cooler highlands in the summer and lowland areas in the winter. So make sure you understand the difference and how they're related. Pastoral nomadism, the form, and again, transhumance is actually that movement or that migration. All right, uh, on the screen, um, looking at different types of um, agriculture, focusing on commercial agriculture. Um, so for commercial agriculture, uh, we're talking about more MDCs. We're talking about the production of specialty crops. We're talking about large scale, talking about selling for profit or again at the marketplace. Um, so there's different types of commercial agriculture. So in this case, we're looking right now at the Mediterranean climate, um, climate zone and type of agriculture. So this type is primarily associated with the region near the Mediterranean Sea and places with climates that have hot, dry summers and mild, wet winters. So close to home, California has a Mediterranean climate. Uh, we can look at Chile, South Africa, the South Australia. These are other places besides just around the Mediterranean Sea that agriculture, this type of climate and agriculture is found. So Mediterranean farming involves uh, wheat, barley, uh, wine, or I should say grapes, vines, um, tree crops, and grazing for sheep and goats. Olives, grapes, figs, um, all those types of things fall into Mediterranean agriculture. Now usually we put Mediterranean agriculture into commercial, but you could argue that Mediterranean farming is both subsistence and commercial, depending on where it's practiced around the world. All right, so on the screen we have some other types of commercial farming. So we also have um, in agriculture something called mixed crop and livestock farming. So this actually involves a farm that grows crops and raises animals, so that's kind of easy to remember. Most of the crops grown in mixed farms are used to feed the farm's animals, which in turn provides manure, fertilizer, as well as goods for sale. Think about you know, chickens, maybe they'll give you eggs or something like that. So most of the mixed farm's income comes from the sale of animal products. This reduces a mixed crop and livestock farmer's complete dependence on the seasonal harvest because the animal products are not dependent, are not as dependent on the season as the crops are. So mixed farming ex exists widely through Europe and Eastern North America, usually near large urban areas with limited land available for more extensive practices, so it's intensive. Most mixed farms produce crop rotation in which a field can be subdivided into different regions. So each region growing on different seed and rotating over time, the crop rotation allows the nutrients to the soil to actually replenish, and then again as each seed leaches different uh, nutrients from the soil. Okay, then we also have something called ranching. Ranching is a commercial grazing or the raising of animals on a plot of land that they, they would graze. So ranching is usually extensive and requires a large amount of land. Since meat and wool are produced, um, are products that are produced that are highly demanded, cattle and sheep are two of the most common animals that we see with ranching. And ranching is practiced in areas where the climate is too dry really to support crops, um, but it's uh, declining in importance necessarily. So to our own history again, we can tie to think about the American Southwest or the Western United States. Uh, around the world, we see this in Argentina, southern Brazil, Uruguay. Ranching is rare really in Europe, um, except the only places we really see it are in Spain and Portugal. So ranching is common also in the tropical uh, forest regions, such as like the west coast of Latin America, and also we see it in parts of northern Mexico. All right, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there, and then we'll continue for part two, continue looking at the different types of commercial agriculture.